Hello, beloveds, and welcome to Christian Emotional Recovery, a podcast for those who are survivors of childhood trauma, emotional neglect, and narcissistic abuse. This podcast is hosted by Rachel Leroy, a college professor and trauma survivor. Many of us spend years trying to heal and don't get anywhere. We don't always target the trauma itself, which is so often what keeps us stuck. This podcast is where faith meets science. Rachel is an emotional healing expert with 20 years of experience applying healing modalities that helped her start making progress after nothing else worked. She'll show you how to do the same. Each week, we'll cover a topic that will show you how to heal trauma for good. Please check out our website and show notes at christianemotionalrecovery.com and join the Facebook community, Trauma Survivors Unite, Christian Emotional Recovery. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Christian Emotional Recovery, the podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Leroy, and this is episode... 13 of season two of the podcast and occasionally I'm going to use a YouTube video to help promote the YouTube channel and convert it into a podcast episode so that I can also save time and I can provide you with the best material possible to help you heal from trauma and abuse. So this episode is from a YouTube video that came out a week ago and it is 10 ways to avoid re-traumatizing yourself when you're trying to heal. 10 ways to avoid re-traumatizing yourself when trying to heal. And this video, like I said, this, this podcast is from the YouTube video. So if you could, could you do me a favor? And if you can, pause the recording right now, the podcast recording, and go subscribe to the YouTube channel because if you aren't subscribed, you're missing out on a lot of wonderful content that can help you empower you, educate you, motivate you, and give you practices that will help you heal trauma, abuse, narcissistic abuse, childhood emotional neglect, and other emotional issues. So go ahead and pause, and then there is a link below in the show notes, Christian Emotional Recovery the YouTube channel, or you can go to YouTube, go to sign into your account and click, go to Christian Emotional Recovery, click on that and click subscribe. And you'll get updates on all the latest episodes. The episodes, just like the podcast, come out every other week overall. I try to do it every two weeks as much as I can. And they alternate the other weeks besides when the podcast is in season and coming out as well. So um, check out what's already there and also check out what is continuing to come out. So subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. But this episode, let's go ahead and jump in, is 10 ways to avoid re-traumatizing yourself when trying to heal. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail because the recording will explain itself, but let me just give you a description and then we'll go straight into the recording of the YouTube video. So trauma recovery is tricky work and it's easy in everyday life and when we're doing healing work with a therapist or on our own to unintentionally re-traumatize ourselves through no fault of our own. Knowing what works and doesn't is vital to trauma recovery. Most people don't understand the nature of trauma recovery and even many well-meaning experts can cause more harm than good when trying to help you. Often we don't even know that that certain events, healing strategies, and or circumstances can re-traumatize us. This video discusses 10 specific ways we inadvertently or unintentionally become re-traumatized, and then it gives 10 solutions to avoid re-traumatizing ourselves when doing healing work. We go into detail about why re-traumatization happens in these situations and specific techniques that will help you move forward with healing work while protecting yourself from further trauma. With the right education and tools, you can move forward instead of backwards in your recovery and achieve healing that sticks. Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Leroy, the host of Christian Emotional Recovery, the podcast. 
the host of Christian Emotional Recovery, the YouTube channel, and also um, the host of Christian Emotional Recovery, the website. So check those out. Hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for visiting the YouTube channel. And if you haven't, also go below to the show notes and check out the link to the podcast and subscribe to that as well. So today I wanted to do a video on 10 ways to avoid re-traumatizing yourself when you're trying to heal. 10 ways to avoid re-traumatizing yourself when you're trying to heal. Now bear with me because um, my computer screen is right here and so I look at this. This is where my notes are for my videos. Some of my videos I will just um, improvise a little bit, but some of them I have fairly detailed notes. So bear with me if I'm looking back and forth between the camera and the um, computer. Thank you for bearing with me. So um, a lot of us are you know, um, survivors of trauma and abuse and traumatic situations and traumatic events. And there's a wide variety of people following the channel now. It is survivors of childhood emotional neglect, childhood trauma, ACEs, which is adverse childhood experiences, and narcissistic abuse, both in childhood and in adulthood. But there's also people on the channel that have suffered from traumatic events, that have had traumatic brain injuries and traumatic physical situations, such as surgeries and other types of injuries injuries that have caused long-term trauma in their minds. And so I hope this channel is helping a variety of people, not just survivors of childhood trauma and uh, emotional neglect and abuse, even though that is the primary focus of this channel. It is for anyone who has survived trauma or anyone who is trying to heal emotionally from anything really. So let's go ahead and look at 10 ways to avoid re-traumatizing ourselves when you're trying to heal. Now, I am using four articles as sources in the um, for the video, but I'm using them as loose sources. So I'm still gonna credit my material and you, I encourage you to read the articles if you get the chance that are in the show notes. And I got some ideas from them in the ways to avoid re-traumatizing yourself and I mixed my own ideas in with those. So I won't be reading off of articles specifically, but I am gonna include those in the show notes. So check those out when you're done. Um, and I may refer to the articles loosely from time to time. But what I want to do is go through and I have a list of 10 ways we re-traumatize ourselves and keep trauma stuck in our bodies. And then I also have a list of 10 ways we can process trauma in a way that releases it from the body and doesn't re-traumatize us. So what I'm doing is coming up with a problem solution problem solution. So for each of these 10, I list a way that we re-traumatize ourselves and then I list a way, a solution to that and I'll explain it a little bit, okay? So follow along, bear with me and um, let's go ahead and jump right in. First, I wanna give a little context. For example, when we re-traumatize ourselves, it can be in a situation that has nothing to do with us healing. That's one situation, just in daily life. Um, and I'm not saying that if we re-traumatize ourselves, it's our fault. It's not our fault. It's not something we're doing on purpose. It's not something where we're deficient and we're stupid or we're dumb and we're just making dumb mistakes. It's not like that at all. Re-traumatizing yourself is very easy. And sometimes when you get re-traumatized in a situation, it's not that you're doing it to yourself. It's just something that happens. So first of all, I don't want you to be hard on yourself and I don't want you to blame yourself because strangely, that's one of those in here is actually layering which is when we re-traumatize and then we get mad at ourselves or sad or upset because we re-traumatize you see how you take that in that emotion and you layer another emotion on it the first thing that I want us to do is to not layer and that's hard but you just stop and you observe and you take a deep breath and you step back and so daily life is one place where we can re-traumatize. And then in another one is we can get re-traumatized in situations where we're in therapy directly with a coach or a therapist or a psychiatrist or a psychologist, a minister, a rabbi, or whatever the case may be. If somebody doesn't know what they're doing when they're doing trauma therapy, 
they are likely, even when they mean well and they're compassionate and they're a good therapist otherwise, to potentially cause re-traumatization. That happened to me a lot in my early therapy because I didn't even know what was going on. And so if you know, then you can find a therapist who also knows what trauma is, who is very informationally educated or very informed about the nature of trauma and how to work with someone like that and and someone who has the wherewithal, the containment, the maturity, and the self-awareness to be able to actually take that into action when they're with you when you're triggered. Because even a trauma-informed therapist can't help you if they don't have the presence to hold a space for you to do that in practice. Does that make sense? So those are some things to think about when avoiding being re-traumatized in therapy. Because the whole point is to help you to feel better, not to help you to become traumatized even more. And the third situation where you can be traumatized or re-traumatized, I should say, is when you're doing healing work on your own or you're doing healing work with God's help and it you do something that is not um, a good strategy. And it may be well-intended, it may even be well-informed. The thing is, is avoiding re-traumatization is very tricky. And it's very, um, you know, it's not complicated, but it's, it's something where you have to learn from experience. And unfortunately, some of that is going through the experience of re-traumatizing yourself or getting re-traumatized. Note when I say you re-traumatize yourself that I'm not blaming, I'm not saying you did it, I'm not saying it's your fault, no, no, and no. I'm just saying that something that happened in a situation where maybe you made a choice inadvertently caused you to get re-traumatized. So just keep that in mind when I'm using that term, okay? So going through, jumping right in, ways we re-traumatize ourselves to keep trauma stuck in our bodies. The first one is talking endlessly about our trauma in our heads, but never working through the trauma in our bodies. Talking endlessly about our trauma in our heads, but never working through the trauma in our bodies. Now, this can be either when we're talking to a friend, talking to a therapist, writing in a journal, just ruminating in our own minds. And what can happen here, I'm not saying you don't need to talk about your trauma. First of all, you do need to talk about your trauma. And you, it helps you to get some of that out of your body. It does help. And also, it can help you to clarify where your trauma came from, what its root source is, and how you need to best work through it. You do need to talk about it with a therapist. You do need to work through that stuff in your journal. The problem comes in when you just keep doing it over and over and over again, and you're not moving forward with it. There should always be some kind of, you can even get temporary relief, but it's not truly healing you. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit, but talking endlessly about trauma and just, I did this one time when I was um, in college, I was doing some very deep healing work. And even though I didn't understand what trauma was, I had a lot of anger and a lot of hurt from things that had happened to me in the past. And I would write just all these angry rants in my journal. And I thought it was therapeutic. And I realized that at some point it was therapeutic at first, but when I kept doing it over and over and it was just repeating the same areas of trauma, I was actually rehashing it and making myself feel bad, feel worse. I was making myself feel worse. So it is tricky sometimes to know, is this helping me? Is this helping me temporarily, but not long term? Or is this actually making me feel worse? So you've got to start feeling in your body and trusting that feeling about whether it's making you feel better or worse. Now, keep in mind when you're doing this, it's not going to feel good, but there's a sense of, of um, what's the word? Uh, it, there's a visceral sense of catharsis that you get, even though it may be painful, you get a sort of cathartic feeling when you know it's healing you and that trauma is coming up out of your body and you're getting a deeper understanding about it. So the, the solution here is talking, journaling, and meditating about trauma as we work on the sources of trauma in the body. So feeling in the body, especially in a safe space with a trauma-informed specialist, is how you will start to bring this stuff up and out of your body. If you're doing it on your own, start with somebody who can help you, and then eventually you can do it more on your own as you get more experience and learn to trust yourself. I never thought I would get to the point where I could do that, and I do. 
and I do. You let God guide you, but you also listen to your body and what it's telling you and feeling into your body without shame, without layering and all of that. But talking, journaling and meditating about trauma as we work through the sources of trauma in the body, finding the balance between these two. And um, there's a guy who works on trauma. He's a great um, expert in this area. I've read his biography and I'm not sure if he's an actual trained therapist or if he's just very trained in this as a coach, but he's done some courses and some meditations that I've actually been very helped by. But I would recommend only getting his work. I would read his articles if you're a beginner, but I would only recommend getting his meditations if you've been doing this a while because his work is very advanced and very subtle. And at first, I didn't even fully understand it, but as I'm, this guy is a genius at this stuff because as I work on it more, I realize where he's coming from and what he's talking about. But when I say a balance between two things, I mean a balance between emotion that's overpowering and overwhelming and disassociating and not feeling and running from your emotions. There's a place in the middle and he calls that containment. And as you get more experience, you'll be able to have more resilience to sit with those powerful emotions without letting them overwhelm you, but still allowing yourself to feel them a little bit at a time, not the whole thing at once in your body. And so talking, journaling, and meditating while you feel that in your body, while you're aware of how your body is responding, that should bring some of that stuff up out of your neural network. If you're body aware and you're working with your body while you're doing those on a specific trauma, whether it's with a therapist or on your own, it will help you, okay? Number two, the way that we re-traumatize ourselves um, and keep trauma stuck in our bodies is disassociating when we're trying to process trauma by avoiding emotions at all costs that we can't feel so that we can't feel anything in our bodies. And there's a hundred thousand ways we can disassociate, but disassociating is basically pushing away, suppressing, repressing, ignoring or denying our emotions because they're too powerful and because we're scared of them. And that's understandable. And there are times when disassociation is actually healthy but it's not healthy to do ongoing. It's not healthy to do ongoing. So as you get that experience with containment, as you work with a specialist who is trauma informed, then you start to do the solution to number two, and that is staying in touch with what's going on in our bodies and objectively being honest about that. And showing yourself compassion, building the ability to sit with our emotions through resilience and gradual, keyword gradual exposure. You don't try to take on the whole trauma all at once. You take one little piece of it and you deal with that little piece and then you take another piece of it and you deal with that little piece and you do a little bit at a time. And that's how you can find a balance between resilience and not overwhelming yourself. Okay, you feel that a little bit at a time and then you come out of it. You feel it a little bit at a time and then you come out of it. Not like constant back and forth. Sit with it for a few minutes and as you get more experience, you'll be able to sit with it longer and sitting with it is what allows it to come up and out of your body because you're feeling it, you're expressing it, you're allowing it to air out where it was suppressed before because somebody told you you couldn't feel that way or because you didn't feel safe or because you didn't know how to deal with it. And none of that's your fault either. So number two is disassociating when we're trying to process trauma by avoiding emotions at all costs so that we can't feel anything in our bodies. And the solution is staying in touch with what's going on in our bodies and objectively and honestly thinking about that, building the ability to sit with our emotions gradually through resilience with gradual exposure. Number three, um, way that we re-traumatize ourselves and keep trauma stuck in our bodies is overwhelming ourselves by letting the emotions of trauma take us over and letting them possess or control us. Now, it's easier said than done to just not let your emotions overwhelm you. And that's why you need to be in a place where you're calm and safe in order to process. And then you can bring that stuff up a little bit at a time. And if it becomes completely overwhelming, back off. If it becomes too much, then stop. That's okay, you can come back to it later when you're able to handle it more, okay? So it is a judgment call, it is something you learn, it's a bit subtle, but you learn from experience 
what is enough and what is too much. And sometimes there's a gray area too, and that's okay. So the solution to this is starting off calmly. So being in a place where you're in a good mental state or an okay mental state, and then starting off calmly when processing trauma, when you're doing your own healing work and observing what is going on in the body while doing the work. So the solution is starting off calmly when processing trauma and observing what is going on in the body while doing the work. So number four, ways we can re-traumatize ourselves and keep trauma stuck in our bodies. Number four is trying to force or push the process too much at a time or more than we're ready to process. That's one that I was guilty of and I thought that I was actually doing powerful healing work, but what I was doing was re-traumatizing myself without realizing it. So it's something you need to be very careful about, but you also want to push forward carefully. Trying to force or push to process too much at a time, I know you want to heal. I know you want to heal fast. I was the same way. I'm like, I'm going to just, I would rather just sit in a bathtub and cry for five days straight and have all this trauma out of my body. And there are some people who've done that, but for me, at least, and for most people, I don't think that's the way to process trauma. And there might be times where we go through something like that and we are in a state of grief and we do let that out of our bodies and it is overwhelming and then we feel better, but that's not generally how you process trauma consciously. Number four here, the um, response to this is processing a little bit at a time instead of trying to take on the whole mountain. Processing a little bit at a time instead of trying to take on the whole mountain. So I know, like I said, trauma sucks and it feels like crap, right? But you take a little bit at a time and over the course of weeks and months, if you're consistent, you start to see that come down. You start to see it come down. Um, so it does add up over time and you'll start to see the progress that you've been looking for. So give it time and be consistent. That doesn't mean every day. Again, don't force to do it every day. If you need a break for a day, take a break for a day. Just don't stay away from it too long. Stay in practice. Find that balance. And that balance is what will really help you to make steady progress. Fast progress in healing trauma is possible, but sometimes it can increase the risk of re-traumatizing yourself. Number five of ways you can re-traumatize yourself and keep trauma stuck in your body is judging your emotions as they come up in a way that makes you feel worse. Judging your emotions as they come up in a way that makes you feel worse. So what that is, is you're traumatized and then you layer on top of that. You either get depressed or mad at yourself or you feel guilt or you're ashamed of yourself because you feel so-and-so emotion that's coming from trauma. Note, the trauma is not your fault. And I know it's easier said than done to not layer, but it is something you can do through meditation. If you go into um, meditation and start to deconstruct this stuff and you become aware of your initial trauma, and then you can see the layering that's separate and you can gently back off from that layering. First, you learn to identify it and then you separate it. That's where the acorn, look at the um, show notes below, the acorn meditation and acorn process that I have for dealing with difficult emotions can help you start to differentiate between your initial trauma and layering or, ooh, this is how I feel about my trauma. You see the difference? So it's not something you need to feel bad about. Layering is perfectly normal. So if you layer, just observe that as well, okay? Um, but judging your emotions as they come up in a way that makes you feel worse doesn't help. But don't judge yourself if you do it. It's tricky, right? But as you practice, you will get better. I didn't think I could ever do any of this. It took me years, but it can be done. It can be done. Not So the solution, number five, is not judging what feelings or thoughts come up in the process and not judging ourselves if judgment comes up too. I'll say it again, not judging what feelings or thoughts come up in the process and not judging ourselves if judgment comes up too, okay? Number six, I want to get on through these, in ways we can re-traumatize ourselves and keep trauma stuck in our bodies is staying cognitive and analytical and not being in touch with what we're feeling in our bodies. Staying overly cognitive and analytical and not being in touch with what we're feeling in our bodies. Now, let me make a note there. There's nothing wrong with being cognitive and analytical about your trauma. And there is a time to step back and be objective and analyze it. But when you're trying to actually do the processing of the healing work, 
You need to go more into your body and allow yourself to feel what you're feeling, like I said, with containment, a little bit at a time, gradually, when you're doing your healing work, when you're doing therapy. So number six here in response to that is being aware of your thoughts without getting caught up in them and completely blocking or completely blocking them out. There's a balance with the emotions. You don't want to overwhelm yourself with too many at a time. You don't want to just let them completely take you over and possess you. You don't want to disassociate with them and you don't want to completely repress them when you're doing the healing work either. You do a little bit at a time. The same is true with your thoughts. You don't completely block out your thoughts. You're aware of them, but you don't just go down a rabbit hole in your thought process and just get swept away so you're not in your body anymore. You stay in your body. You're aware of your thoughts without getting caught up in them. So you don't get caught up in them like your emotions or you also don't completely block them out. So it's being aware of them without being overwhelmed by them or forgetting about what's going on in your body. Stay in the body and stay aware of your thoughts. And you can go back and forth a little bit with each one. It doesn't have to be where, where you're trying to do both at the same time on some balancing skill. Does that make sense? So just be gentle with yourself there and work on it a little bit at a time. Number seven of ways we re-traumatize ourselves to keep trauma stuck in our bodies is not having the emotional resilience to sit with the emotions and feel them for a time. Not having the emotional resilience to sit with the emotions and feel with them for a time. This one, don't judge yourself if you can't do this. This takes practice. It's hard. It takes a warrior and it takes courage to sit with emotions like this because every fiber of our being and our very evolutionary instinct in how God made us makes us want to run from those. And that's a mechanism that is survival and helps you to survive in situations when you can't deal with stuff like that. But when you're dealing with it and when you're healing it, you build that resilience gradually over time. You'll find that maybe you can sit with it for 30 seconds at first, and then two minutes, and then five minutes, and then 10 minutes, and then 30 minutes, and so on. And the point of sitting with this is to heal it and to let it out, right? And so you build that resilience up over time by being kind and gentle with yourself and by doing it gradually. You do push forward. You do have to have some wherewithal and some courage and some warrior spirit in order to do this healing work. It takes courage and it takes oomph, but you do a little bit at a time at the same time. So having the emotional resilience to sit with the emotions and feel them for a time is something you gradually build up over time through meditation especially. Meditation is really helpful. Also working with a therapist one-on-one -on -one is helpful as well. Um, also learning to be in touch with your own felt sense which is basically means being in touch with what it feels like to be real, whole, physical, and complete in your body. And that's where grounding work will help you to become more resilient as well. So I will say that again. One other solution here is learning to be in touch with your own felt sense. And what that basically means is having that full embodied presence in your body and in your mind, like I've been talking about, and being in touch with what it feels like to be real, whole, physical, and complete in our bodies. If you've suffered from trauma, there's probably a part of you that doesn't feel real. There's probably a part of you that doesn't feel completely like you're in your body looking out from your head to your toes. So those grounding exercises, and one that I recommend, I recommend Peter Levine's work, Peter Levine, L-E-V-I-N-E, -E, um, because he does a lot of grounding stuff to help you feel real and grounded in your body, okay? So there's a lot of other great work out there too. There's a lot of free stuff on YouTube if you can't afford a course or, you know, there's a lot of good books out there too. I, I do a lot of audible books because I sit in front of a computer for like eight hours a day between teaching and working on the podcast and doing training for things. So, um, but yeah, um, that felt sense starting to feel in your body, you'll feel just, this is my hand, and you'll feel the boundaries of your hand. This is my arm, and you'll feel the boundaries of your arm. And at first you won't feel it, but it's like, you're like, what is this? Why am I doing this? And then one day you're like, oh, that's my arm. I can't explain it. It's just you know it's there and you feel it. You're like from inside of your hand and outside, inside of your arm, feeling outward. You're inside of your own body. And then you start to do that and feel that more and more and feel that with your entire body, your arms from head to toe, your, all the way down to your 
the tip of your toes. And all I can say is, is I can't explain it, but if you do the work, you will understand what I'm talking about, where you feel grounded, whole, and real in your body. But if you understand what it means to feel disembodied, to feel disconnected from your body, to feel disassociated, to not feel completely whole, to not feel completely real, like everything's sort of happening in a dream instead of real, it kind of helps get rid of that brain fog too. And so you start to be grounded in reality and in your body, and it's wonderful. That's part of healing. Number eight. Number eight, feeling our feelings without judgment. Sorry, number eight. Number eight of ways we re-traumatize ourselves and keep trauma stuck in our bodies is feeling strong feelings but bottling them up inside due to shame of what we're feeling. So one of them is letting it overwhelm us, but one of those aspects that's unhealthy is bottling that stuff inside. That's toxic. Feeling our feelings but not allowing ourselves to let it out, bottling up everything inside due to shame of what we're feeling. Now, the solution to this is feeling our feelings without judgment, a little bit at a time, and the sensations in the body without letting them overwhelm, possess, or control us. I'll say it again. Feeling our feelings without judgment, a little bit at a time, and the sensations in the body of what's going on with those emotions without letting them overwhelm, possess, or control us. Number nine of ways we re-traumatize ourselves to keep trauma stuck in our bodies is getting caught up in the ongoing narrative or script behind the trauma instead of the energy in the body. You see the difference? So getting caught up in the ongoing narrative, the rumination, the storyline behind the trauma instead of the energy in the body. Now, it's good to be aware of those repeating tapes. It's good to be aware of what the narrative is because you can actually rewrite that narrative and journal on that some. But um, that can become a trap a rabbit hole you go down in and a lot of times it's hard to get out of it a lot of times you can't help it when you go in it i've been there a million times believe me i know what that's like feeling trapped there and sometimes you just have to give it some time and let things kind of change and shift on their own but if you can find a way to get out of that then that's good too so it's one solution number nine is observing the tape or narrative that plays in our minds without getting caught up in it Instead, gently going back to the sensations in the body brought up by these thoughts. I'll say it again. Observing the tape or narrative that plays in our minds without getting caught up in it. And instead, gently going back to the sensations in the body on brought on by these thoughts. So that is a solution there. And you do that again with therapy, meditation, grounding, child inner child work and strategies like that number 10 number 10 working with a therapist who is not trauma informed who pushes us too quickly who doesn't push us enough or who doesn't have the emotional professional capacity to be present with us even if they are trauma informed so when you pick a therapist you can be picky you can say i don't think we're a good match you can Try 10 therapists before you find the right one. Make phone calls. Ask questions. Be direct. They're used to that. They expect that. It's okay not to go see a therapist if you don't feel like it's a good match. Find somebody who's compassionate, who's informed, who's good at what they do, who can have full presence when you're there. Somebody who will be real with you, but also somebody who can validate you. Somebody who's trauma-informed and mature. So the problem is working with a therapist who is not trauma informed or who pushes us too quickly or who doesn't push us enough or who doesn't have the professional emotional capacity to be present with us even if they are trauma informed. Now every therapist can have an off day that nobody's perfect, but overall can they do those things? Um, they may not may be able to do one or two, but not the others. You need to find somebody who can do all of them as much as possible. And then working with a compassionate, trauma-informed therapist who can apply that knowledge with the insights to know when to push forward and when to back off when working with us is absolutely important. So do your homework, do your research, get online and find trauma-informed therapists, one, who are um, 
you have more choices now to if you're able to get a therapist. I know not everybody can afford that. And there are alternatives. Like I said, you can still do the healing work on your own. And there's a lot of people who never see a therapist. They do the healing work with God's help. And they are able to do the full healing, get the full healing, and God heals them. But if you can see a therapist, then do your homework. Look for highly rated therapists. I may do a video another time on how to look for a therapist. I'm not an expert on that, but I've had enough experience and I know enough about this whole process that I can help you with that. But find somebody who's highly rated. Find and then find people that do telehealth if that's an option for you and if you feel like that's something where you can still get um, successful therapy. If you feel like you need somebody in person, then you know do what works for you. Do what works for you. But those are the 10, the 10 ways you can process trauma, 10 ways that you can avoid re-traumatizing yourself when you're trying to heal. Those are the 10 ways to avoid re-traumatizing yourself when you're trying to heal. So I hope that those have been helpful. I will take the four articles that I used as loose sources for this podcast, for this YouTube channel, I should say, and put them in the show notes. If you haven't, click the subscribe bell and also look at the show notes and the other sources. Click on the link there and go to my um, ChristianEmotionalRecovery.com website. Sign up for the email list and go to Christian Emotional Recovery Facebook group, also linked below. Join. Uh, you're welcome to join. And also go to the Christian Emotional Recovery podcast if you haven't already and subscribe because you get even more there. You get exclusives that are only on YouTube, exclusives that are only on the podcast. And for the most part, what's in one place is not in the other. So to get everything, you'll need to subscribe to the podcast and to the YouTube channel separately, even though I do also add the podcast to my YouTube channel. So that's another option for you as well. Thank you so much for going on this journey for me. I know this was a long video. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was insightful. And I hope it'll give you strategies that will help you to heal. And I'm going to come up with more resources that you can like look at this. I'm going to have an online store and I'm going to have reasonable prices. And I'm hoping to be able to take like some of these strategies and write them down in tutorials and infographics and courses and stuff like that in the future. But in the meantime, the YouTube channel will always be free. The podcast will always be free. The Facebook group will always be free. So God bless you. Remember you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you so much and have a great day. That was the YouTube video recording. That's the ending of it. And the name of the episode was 10 Ways to Avoid Re-Traumatizing Yourself When Trying to Heal. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for following this episode. I hope that it's helped you to hone in on and fine-tune your healing processes, your healing journey, the strategies you use, what you do when you go into therapy, what you do when you're working on your healing work at home by yourself and with God's help. And these strategies will help you to avoid re-traumatizing yourself, but also also consider solutions to that problem so that you can actually move forward with your healing and you don't stay stuck. Thank you so much for listening. Check out the Christian Emotional Recovery Facebook page at Christian Emotional Recovery on Facebook, the Christian Emotional Recovery.com website, and the Christian Emotional Recovery YouTube channel. If you haven't, go to the YouTube channel and click subscribe bell now, and you will get all the updates on things that you cannot get on the episodes of the podcast. It's exclusive to YouTube. There is a little overlap when I repurpose one of these, but most of them are not in the podcast. So go check that out, and I think you'll find a lot of specialized stuff that you don't find in the podcast that you will find very helpful. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God loves you. You can heal and God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Christian Emotional Recovery, hosted by Rachel Leroy. For links to this week's resources and to join the discussion, check out this episode's show notes at christianemotionalrecovery.com where you can also find links to our YouTube channel and Facebook group. Join our email list and get other episodes and resources. If you enjoyed the podcast, please rate and review the podcast and tell a friend who may benefit from this message. See you next time. And remember, beloveds, God loves you, and you are fearfully and wonderfully made.